viewers of Upland TV, follow us on YouTube channel, uh, Facebook and Twitter. Uh, this evening, tonight, we are having a conversation with our key intellectuals, guest speakers that you've invited them. And I am Lakot Nancy as the moderator, the main host. And with me here, I have the guest speakers. And may we have them on board to introduce themselves. Can we start from my left hand side? Sister, you're welcome. Um, hello, everyone. My name is Apar Maclin. Uh, first runner, Miss Kate Boom, and first runner, Miss Guli University. Thank you. Thank you, Nancy. Thank you, Upland MTV viewers present. I am Jakeo Chan, uh, the director of this WAPU project, CBO, who is hosting them here. At the same time, I'm the consultant, OPM, as the gender specialist. Welcome. Yeah, thank you, viewers of Upland TV. I am Dr. Dennis Kilama. I double as the district youth councillor, five or more, and the interim speaker, uh, National Youth Councillor Forum. I'm happy to be here tonight to have a conversation with uh, Madam uh, Nancy, the moderator. Good evening, viewers of Upland TV. Thank you so much for having this opportunity and inviting us over to discuss these sensitive issues. I'm Joanna Leng by name, and I'm a community psychologist by profession and a very active community member who is free to talk about anything in the community. Thank you. Back to last year, we are going to digest matters of importance that we have put on, on our table as the main topic that we shall exhaust tonight. And probably the topic that we have chosen is that how best can organizations and institutions promote gender equality at workplaces? And probably we are going to start with uh, a key intellectual person, that is Dr. Kilama Dennis who is also the Youth Councillor 5 of Amuro District. And we really appreciate you. And let me bring you on board to start up and digest this topic, that how best can organizations and institutions promote gender equality at workplaces? Uh, thank you. Moving to the topic of tonight, uh, the question is how can organizations and institutions promote gender equality at workplaces? I think this is a well thought uh, topic and uh, maybe before we look actually how institution and organization can promote uh, uh, equality, gender equality at workplaces, we need to know what is this equality because sometimes people miss point here. Uh, with a basic understanding to say equality is when uh, there is equal access there is equal access to job opportunities or even salaries given to people regardless of their gender when such happen we say that is gender equality everybody has equal what opportunity or access to resources, to employment, to education, to anything that exists within communities. So we say that is gender what? Equality. Of course, we have been hearing many uh, organizations came in, especially the women, the, they have seen that this equal access has not been provided for the women. So they started forming what we call Women Rights Association, UN uh, Women, so and so, all with the effort that they want women to be taken equal as men. But sometimes in the process of executing, these points are also being lost, especially if you look at our cultural context. As uh, the African, to be specific like the Acholi, there are things that men believe are not for women and the thing also which women know is not for them but they 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 they, they, they want to sometimes talk about equality without highlighting things which are not what theirs i can say my sister is laughing among others is when it comes to pooling money 
women will all do talk about equality very well until when it reaches that part, say pull money or pay bill. <laughs> that will be where equality will lose meaning. But now, leaving that aside, how can organization and institution ensure that equal access regardless of gender? Number one is educating people at workplace and the community in general about the unconscious gender bias. There are things that happen in organizational or workplace which we cannot easily know this is gender bias, but they are there. Among others, there are organizations who fear to employ ladies, especially when you are pregnant. They will think you are going to produce soon and take time off for maternity leave. That is unconscious gender bias, but you may not know it. And when they are employing, they will uh, secretly, even if you as the lady perform well, they secretly employ the man. And you'll never know, you are happy. Uh, maybe I miss it, but you are pregnant and it was seen. Unconsciously. Hmm? But others even make in, in that issue of pregnancy, they make it conscious. They'll tell you, for sure, you're coming new, you're pregnant, we cannot employ you. So we need to address that, educate people about those unconscious gender bias. Among others could be like in workplaces, you might be actually equally big, like my sister, could be serving a very uh, good position, but then because she is a lady, someone will always want to tease her to do certain things instead of telling me as a man. But because the culture said ladies are supposed to be in a certain way, it will be like unconsciously they are treating her that way because of her gender. Another thing that organizations need to do is uh, appointment of recruitment team, uh, appointment of diverse recruitment team. This will solve the gender bias at the time of selecting employees to be brought into an organization or in an institution of work. Because if we sit in this panel and we are maybe like our numbers here, we are, we are, we are five, eh? two men and two ladies, we're not going to have that bias because anything we are going to be talking about, all of you must listen. And if the issue will say we are not employing her because she's a lady, I'm very sure you too will say, no, you can never do that. So if organization and institution appoint recruitment team in such a diverse manner that the composition uh, include both female and male gender, I think that one will solve some of the uh, gender inequality at workplace and in, such, in so doing will be promoting gender equality. Another thing is, uh, routine or timely audits of the gender roles and maybe gender bias or the context of gender equality within an organization. Such audit will always bring on board to find out what exactly is happening. I know among things that always happen, say sometimes is uh, organization have their set rule about how certain gender has to do certain things. And sometimes like issue to do with uh, relationship within workplace, they, they, they discourage it. Uh, but you find sometimes people have feelings. The more I live near you, I might develop some feelings. And then sometimes in certain cases we have seen some organization, they end up sending the lady away, especially sometimes if it results in pregnancy, they leave the man. On. So if audits are done, we'll always ensure that there's no side which is lying low. Every side is moving together within the organization. Uh, another way of actually providing or ensuring gender equality is provision of equal opportunity for learning opportunities within the organization and all further studies. This will ensure nobody is inferior. 
if an organization is big enough and consider capacity building as one of its key way for progress, when opportunities come, you should always ensure that not only certain gender are considered for that. Every gender should be given. All the gender within the organization should be given the opportunity to try. If you say it is based on merit, yes, consider the merit. If you say it, of course, maybe it's based on certain vulnerability, consider or stick to that and let them provide equal access to opportunity based on the guideline that you have. In doing so, you will also ensure that promotion to positions are balanced. And then there will be balance equation that everyone feels they are involved. And maybe lastly uh, is transparency and uh, balance of power within the organization. Uh, these are two things. When I talk of balance of power, some organizations make it deliberate to have only men or female to be head of those organizations. I don't want to mention others, <laughs> because others, uh, as we talk about equality or inequality, many women put themselves, actually women generally, they put themselves as vulnerable. They are at the disadvantaged side when we are talking about inequality. But some organizations also are making men to be at the disadvantaged side because they consider these positions are for women. So let's have balance of power that if we have maybe the ED is a woman, maybe assistant ED should be a what? A man. If we do that, we are balancing power. And when power is balanced, nobody will actually feel inferior. And power will be in check. Because now, if you make men are all like the one in power, women in that organization will be vulnerable. Because they will start thinking, they will always have to succumb to pressure. Because nobody, if all women are subordinate, they will feel their fellow women cannot help them. A case in point, we have seen things that are happening. Maybe if we interest ourselves to understand certain organizations where certain things come, like what was trending around, we may find, I'm not sure about it, we may find maybe top position are only occupied by men. Maybe such a vulnerable lady that we saw the being uh, sexual, I don't want to say sexually harassed because we, the investigation was not done. Maybe they had mutual agreement. But the context of the agreement need to be screened. Was this person in a high position of leadership? Is there any other female person also in a high position of leadership within that same organization where these other ladies can speak to and say, maybe so and so is threatening me to lose my position if I don't do this, 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 this. If you don't have that, sometimes you see things that happen. So I want to end by saying, considering those, we can ensure that there's gender equality at workplace within organization and institution. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Kulama Dennis, uh, who is also who double us the Youth Councillor 5 of Amuro District. Uh, probably on back to my sister, we are going to... There is a question that I really need to pick from what he has just talked about the issue of uh, the, the competency, whether by having a job position by a female should be considered due to maybe the competency that the lady has or the qualification that she has. Uh, what is your stand on this, this topic that how best can organizations and institutions promote gender equality? Uh, in relation to the aspects of sexuality, because I heard him talking about uh, the relationship could be when the woman is having a younger position in the organization, then due to that uh, intimacy she could be promoted. What is your stand on that? Oh, thank you so much. I think uh, I'm going to divert a little bit somewhere in my, in my uh, submission. I want to clearly start off by gender discussions. A number of times when we talk about gender, gender has literally been cornered as women. And that is why when you move to very many places where you're going to find a gender officer, most of them are women. I ask myself, where are the men? 
when do they play part in this gender campaign? Because gender is not women. Gender is literally all of us. So when we're talking about gender equality, we're not talking about women equality to men. Yeah. yeah? We are talking about all of us being equal. In plain, all of us being equal. Mm. So um, drafting from, uh, from what Doctor mentioned about uh, sexual exploitation, yeah. like how we've been seeing it happening uh, in the, uh, the most recent trending videos here on, 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 on WhatsApp. I, I actually had a very big challenge with this because there were a lot of insults and abuses being thrown at always the male, assuming, actually, people just assume that whenever there is violation, the men are always the perpetrators, which is a very wrong idea. Because when you look around our communities, apparently, there are so many women who are violating the men. But just because of very many reasons, of course, including our culture, uh, dictating that men do not cry, the men stay in silence. And that explains why we have so many men, apparently, committing suicide. Because they don't have avenue to discuss their issues. Mm. When a man walks up to, let's say, a child protection unit in the police here and says, you know, my wife has abandoned the children with me. He will be looked at, man, what are you talking about? <laughs> like, how, how is that possible? Just go away, this is even not an issue. Yeah? But then when a woman walks into the uh, child and family unit and says, my husband is not supporting, immediately a letter is written to summon this man. And actions are drastically taken. Mm. We have women who are abandoning up their children. We have women who are abandoning their roles in homes as mothers. And the men are taking that on. But the men don't have space. Even when you look at our, our intervention of gender equality aspect of it, we have child-friendly spaces, which is okay, that covers all the male and the female children. We have women's safe spaces. Where do the men go to talk about their issues? Mm. They don't have these spaces. Mm. And by the fact that we have women's safe space, already we are isolating them from the community. We are making them feel as if they are visitors. And when you're a vista, you're vulnerable because you don't know all corners of the community. So our implementation as well as, as partners who are in this campaign of gender equality, I see a very big gap. And my gaps are in that line because the men are being put aside as perpetrators. And that has actually, by the way, uh, sent uh, a very big rise in GBV issues and not only GBV but even sexual... SGBV, sexual gender-based violence. Mm. Why? Because the men are being pushed sh to show the women that we are still in power, we are still in control. When you hear a number of women, I, I attend to a lot, of, uh, a lot of clients in my daily work, I hear a lot of women, when you ask them, how is life at home? You know, how is your relationship with your husband? And then she openly tells you, you know, I don't have a husband. Because I'm the one who contributes at home. Who tells you because you contribute now you don't have a husband? Oh. You have not buried him. He's still living with you. He's a husband whether he contributes or not. Now we are tagging men <coughs> to be men by virtue of their amount or level of contribution. Oh. Which is very wrong. And this is being brought about by the negative publicity or campaign of gender equality. We are not doing it right. We are pushing women as revengers in their homes. And this is creating a lot of gaps. People are fighting every now and then. People are doing funny things. We see nasty things now happening in our communities, which were initially not there. Why? Because we are giving wrong information. We are giving avenues for funny things to happen, things that were not in existence in our society until negative campaigns came in. I'm not, equal, I'm not against gender equality. I'm actually pro-gender equality. But I prefer that the right information be given. Maybe to ask something briefly on what you have just talked about. Mm. And many international organizations, maybe for of about 40 nowadays, mm. that currently mean that strictly talk about women's emancipation. Sure. And you say that women, they are trying to under, I mean, they're, they're, they're women, maybe due to emancipation, they are trying to say that men are not supportive to them and so that they don't call them as their husbands. Uh, I would like to know. Why is it that 
uh, in other offices like maybe the human rights, the office of the probation, you find that when a woman is beaten, she goes in to report the cases. But if a man, maybe the man is beaten by the wife, yeah. you see that they don't, they don't report. Do you think that committing suicide or any other thing is the only solution to curb that problem? So are you trying to mean that women's emancipation is the one causing all this? Um, I'm not directly saying women's emancipation is causing the men to actually keep quiet. There are very many reasons, I can't exhaust them all, why men keep quiet. They're actually here, they'll tell us more. <laughs> why do you men keep quiet? The society considers uh -huh. us superior. True. Here in a children for you, my, my, my papa is elder, he can tell, but you as a man to cry when a woman beats you, they'll say you are very weak. You to now go to police to report your woman that you brought to your home that she has abandoned, she has beaten me, is, is culturally... <laughs> considered not right. Yeah? And that is where our culture at times I feel is very wrong. Yeah? As women, we are born and raised as weak because society has made us believe that we are weak. But literally, we are not that weak. All we need is the opportunity. Avail me the right opportunity, give me the space to show you how much I can contribute to the development and well-being of my community. So the men are actually forced by culture to stay quiet. Because when you speak up, people think you're weak. There are a number of them who have come up. The number of men who have come up Offline. and they have, they have talked about the, the, the abuses that they're experiencing in their lives. Num a number of their friends have laughed at them. Even the service providers themselves have laughed at them and have called them names, have used their, you know, their experiences in various places to make sure that men feel weak. But we all feel pain. When I pinch doctor, I'm sure he's going to feel pain. I Equally, will. when he pinches me, I will <laughs> feel pain. So we are literally the same. We have the same makeup. Yeah, we have the same makeup. We all have the capacity to feel pain, to get hurt, to cry. But why must culture force a man not to? But even if culture says a man is not supposed to cry, when you're feeling pain, do you have to wait for culture to ring a bell for you to say, I feel pain? You don't have to. You have to simply come up, find the right spot, and speak about your issues. Yeah? And apparently, we're having men who are trying to come up. They are slowly trying to come up. Of course, we, the women, are always there at home. Are you a weakling? They, I just did something small now. You've told your brother. You've told so-and-so. Everyone knows <laughs> that I'm a bad woman. Yeah? What do you want them to do? What do you want your in-laws to do? But it's not right. If you are feeling pain, if you're being abused, you are free to always just talk about it. When I go back to this situation, no one actually took time to find out from the man, the sexual video that is moving around. Everyone is throwing stones at him. No one wants to find out. What if he was seduced into that? <laughs> now, he became vulnerable because he saw something that was so enticing that he could not turn his eyes away from. Yeah? And everyone is quick at saying, with the, of course, the common knowledge that men are perpetrators, this man is being hanged by the community apparently i can use the word hanged because no one is looking at his side of the story everyone is no the girl is still young blah 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 there is no rep there she wasn't raped she, she wasn't forced into that office i also don't know how she got herself there i don't know if she works there or what i don't know the status of their affairs sure. but this offense was committed by the two where is the girl in the picture where is the girl in the abuse she has to be there as well, because he wasn't doing it to himself. There was a partner, and that partner was female gender. She has to be brought. Her story has to be heard. What if this is actually her husband, they're in a mutual relationship, but the community is not aware, and then someone feels it's a problem because he's older than her, the cross-generational thing, he's older than her, and then I think, everyone I think people has people are questioning where it was done, uh, not yes, the age. Then, <laughs> people are saying he's old. You know, he's an old man, he's not supposed to, <laughs> this is rape. There, and I keep asking myself, I even kept asking in a few WhatsApp groups, what is the offense that this man is being charged with? Because if his workplace would come up and accuse him for abuse of office, to me that would be okay. Yeah? But if his office is not coming up to stand and say, we don't like the fact that you did it in our office, mm. 
how do I come in when a 20 something plus year old girl decides to have affairs may, with may, the person may, of her may, choice? Maybe the brother found out that his promising job for the sister that in exchange of sex. That is so where the sister, <laughs> the girl should have been heard from. Probably we are to continue and discuss this matter of sexuality. We are to continue and discuss this matter of sexuality. We are not going to end here. Uh, basically, I just okay. refer back to her because Mrs. Elaine Joan is a community activist and she is also a psychologist. That's why I referred the question to her so that she could highlight it more. Uh, from where you've stopped about the issue of cross-generational affairs, uh, with me here I have Anne Heldali, who is also a worker with an organization called WAPU. Uh, probably, I really need to know something with Papa. Uh, if you are to analyze the situation of those days, how courtship is taken up, maybe the relationship is being taken up by the couples, then you are to relate it with the the aspects of relationship nowadays in the contemporary society, then you find that there is the high increase of cross-generational affairs. What could be the reason of that? Thank you so much, Nancy. I would like to reflect back to the 1990s, when actually we had never got independence. Before we got independence, most people were not actually going to school. We had traditional education, which we had in the Wang O, where the children, the elders, the adults used to teach their children to respect the morals of the society. There was even no computation about labor. So you find that the domestic labor was the source of food, it was the source of everything for the family. There was nothing like computation. So when we got independence, many of the people joined the educational sector. The education brought different employment, which brought now computation for employment. So when employment came in the 80s, even girls were selecting certain kind of education on gender, which they were saying. So ladies were choosing secretarial jobs, and you find that uh, ladies were not engineers, ladies were not even driving. So ladies were doing certain tasks of the education. With the more increase in population, there people and poverty, people have a level of respect. So you'll find that girls now want to compete for the mine, very few jobs that they have. So because they cannot compete, they have to now to go in the mainstream and then leave some of these men. Respect and the training which used to be at the Wang O is already lost. Now people do not now respect each other. With the poverty, with education, you find that people have to compete for the few jobs which are already there. The moral standards and the moral value have already been lost. So whenever they have given opportunities for employment, you will find that over 30 or even 200 people compete for one post. Because now of the limited position, you will find that a girl has to pave her way by all means. So you'll find that sometimes she can be abused simply to get promise. So you'll find that people who are also corrupt can abuse her, that you give me in kind, I will employ you. Uh, Miss so, Sapar Maclin, uh, first run up kid room district. Uh, pertaining the questions that we have asked that, how, I mean, how best can organizations and institutions uh, do to promote gender equality in workplaces. I have seen you in so many occasions and you've been interacting with many organizations including WAPO to promote this gender equality. What is your stand or what could be the initiative as Ms. Kidgum uh, basing on the fact that we are promoting gender equality? Yeah, thank you so much once again for giving me this opportunity. Yeah, I'm seated here and I'm going to speak as Miss Kitgum because I'm not alone. We are like a team. So we can also fall under this organization. Um, pertaining the issue of gender equality, I'm so grateful to my CEO Jacqueline Oyela because uh, we were also working in line with the same theme of promoting gender equality. 
So I think the first thing that we should make it clear, people are so much misinterpreting the, the, the term gender equality. Because as my sister said, when someone uh, hears of gender equality, they are going to take it back on the side of women or the side of girls. So we should know that anyone who is coming up to advocate for gender equality or anyone that is going to stand up saying that we should uh, promote gender equality in everything that we do, it means that we should promote equal rights, opportunities and responsibilities regardless of the sex. So as a woman, if you're coming up on the issue of gender equality, you should not come up that my man is maybe not giving me school fees or you first wait that if at all my, 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 my husband is going out and comes uh, in the morning I should also go outside and come back in the morning and you think you're going to promoting to be promoting gender equality um, as as my team or in our team as Miss Kit Miss and Mr. Kitgum we are trying hard to Organize. We have not yet done anything so far, but we are trying hard. We have our projects, but most of us are also tied up because we are students. So we are trying very hard to, to, to start our projects, which includes the, the school outreach, the community outreach, uh, the mass media sensitization on how people should understand and perceive gender equality and initiating to the individuals the gender equality and even making the young ones to understand more about the gender equality because they are the people that are going to grow and take up um, they are the people to grow to the next generation so we have thought it wisely that if we can make that foundation in primary schools and the lower secondary it is going to help us a lot so that in some good years to come we shall not be battling the issue of gender inequality so much and again uh, people like uh, somehow colliding gender equality and gender stereotype and gender and gender equity we all know that these three things are, are different so we cannot say that now that we are promoting gender equality uh, what should be given to girls should also be given to boys now from here we are going to operate on uh, seeing the issue of being fair because I cannot say that since I have my boy and I have my girl they are going to school for me to start showing them this gender equality thing I should all give them uh, everything like equally uh -huh. I cannot give them things equally there is a way that I should give something to a girl which is which I'm not going to give to my to my boy child it doesn't mean that I'm going to promote gender inequality but it's because that maybe what my girl needs may not be necessary for my boy so we should not be confusing gender equality and gender equity we should promote gender equality and gender equity as well for us to be fair in everything that we are going to do. And again, we are also working on this project of gender stereotype, like trying to talk to our youths, trying to talk to our, our children that what a man can do, a woman can also do. We know that in line with our culture, and at times some norms, we are, we are having this mindset that at times what a man can do all what men can do, at times you find that ladies cannot do. And still on the aspect of gender equality, even boys are somehow affected that. What a girl can do at times, I should leave it to a girl, but I should not do that thing. Not knowing that at times you can be sitting on your blessing or opportunities just because you're seeing that, that thing is meant for girls. So also we are trying to work hard to 
rub away that stereotype, that mindset that since this boy is taking chemistry, I cannot take chemistry as a girl. Just that like is even in organizations, you see that there are other positions like secretaries are being dominated by females. Exactly. So like you're trying to mean that even the, the, the male gender should also be fixed onto that position. Yes. Then it brings a definition of gender equality. It brings the definition of gender equality and, and doing away with gender stereotypes. So all these things work hand in hand and we should not confuse them we should just bring them the way they are when we talk of gender equality we should know that that is equal rights and responsibilities if it means raising the kids it means that the lady and the man is going to contribute equally if it means 50 50 percent it's going to be 50 50 percent thank you so much uh, you. I, I will pose another question but i've picked something from what you have just said uh, you've talked about gender equality and gender equity. According to maybe my analysis, uh, majorly issues to do with gender equality is when you do things 50-50, a man and a woman, maybe when you're on, uh, on a rental, this month I pay, the next month a man pay, maybe pay me, payment of tuition, the children's school fees, you are supposed to do it together as, as partners. But probably the issue of equity is when uh, things that men can do, even women nowadays they can possess. Like if you're to see many business around, they used to say that men only dominate such kind of things. But nowadays we also see resources being honed by women. So that is what we termed it as equity. Uh, from what you've just talked about the equality, uh, why is it that nowadays we have the high cases of the teenagers the young girls and boys involving themselves in these aspects of cross-generational affairs. Do you still believe that we have lust or real or love? Or uh, are these youth not utilizing the opportunity of courtship or uh, they are trying to, to rush into the relationship? Do we call that as aspects of relationship? So what is your, 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 your stand on the issue, in the, on the aspects of cross-generational affairs? Thank you so much for that wonderful question. It's quite interesting. Yeah, you know, when it comes to issue of relationship and love, now it depends on one person. I think in everything that we are doing, we should do it trans with transparency, truth, and love. Because now, when you bring the issue of when you bring the issue of cross generational cross generational affair, now here we have we have a lot of issues. Now on the trending videos. Uh, specifically maybe in northern Uganda we are having very many videos and others are not even captured but we are quite sure that they are they, they are happening and they are existing yeah still like if I'm to relate it to the issue of gender gender equality at times as my sister said you find that when you see a young a young lady being maybe in an affair with an old man at times we do say that maybe it's 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 something of being desperate for material things um yeah specifically material resources. things uh, yeah that is resources so me what i can say to my young girls it's learn to learn how to work hard or learn how to build something in transparency and love and again we should know how to handle ourselves and that still takes me back to why we are trying to organize for school visits. We are trying to teach adolescents how they can handle themselves, how they can handle their feelings, to tell them that your yeah, feelings do exist but it doesn't mean that you can now go to someone with that feelings, like someone older than you. You should you, learn how to uh -huh, have self-control. Exactly, you should learn how to have sex control. So, so I'm trying to tell my girls that we should not be possessed with uh, the needs for material things. We should be contented with what we have. We should accept the truth that, yeah, we are school-going students, we are still young, we don't have things, but should not take us to these sugar daddies just because we want to paint our nails, we want to plate our hairs. If we are poor, we should understand that we are poor, we accept the, the truth that we are poor, and work hard and try to change that status.
other than being dependent just for something and you call it love that is not love i think that is not even last on the side on the side of girls maybe on other sides of our papa if i'm to say it can be last but the one for girls that is just love for material things and being desperate for what you don't have like it's all right. Thank you so much. Uh, this is Miss Aparo, Queen Aparo Maclean, who is uh, first runner-up, Miss Kirgum. And then we have also been with the key intellectuals, the guest speakers. We have been with Dr. Kilama, uh, who is also the Councillor 5 of Amuro District. And then we have also been with Miss Aleng Joan, who is a community activist and then a psychologist. And then we also have Angel Dali with us. Uh, that we have been exhausting matters of importance pertaining the question that we posted that how best can organizations and institutions promote gender equality uh, in workplaces. I have been Lakot Nancy uh, with Haplan TV as the main host and a moderator. Thank you so much. Briefly, uh, we are going for a commercial break and then we shall be back in short minutes. Thank you so much. My woman, oh. Take my hand, oh. take my hand. Show me love. They are truly kind of loving. Show me love. They are truly kind of loving. I'm in love with you. My heart is indebted to you. I can say, I can say, I can say. They tell me this, they tell me that They say my bitch, say she a bad Anytime I knock, I knock with that Rubber band, no oh, rubber band Every time I put them, they show me that If I know, loud, she got my back I do you go, I'm happy that I do you go, say everything I do is for my woman Anything I talk, when you talk, I go do uh -uh. Me and they see another girl for my visuals Loving you, loving you, now in my ritual uh, My girl, he got me, she not stingy She give me love, so she want it All of the moves you been practicing Put it on, put it on, put it on top me Girl, give me love for my moto Girl, he all light in my store She and me girl, no more score She know they are she know so Say everything I do is for my woman Anything I do, when you talk, I go do Thank you so much. Back to the program, I have been Lakot Nancy, and with me here I have Angel Dali, that is Mr. Ochan Jakeo, who is the CEO of this great organization called WAPU, and then he is also a consultant. Uh, back to the question that I've posted to you on the question of how best can organizations and institutions fight I mean promote gender equality. And we have been highlighting more on the issue of cross-generational affairs. And before we have been talking about, uh, we have been making reference of the past courtship uh, into the contemporary society. And then I would really need to know from you, Papa Ezan Heldali, uh, seated beside this young, intelligent youth, I would like to know uh, something brief from you pertaining the issue of cross-generational affairs. Why is it that nowadays we have the trending issue among the young teenagers about this? about these affairs with all old people as we can see the videos trending uh, the, the stories the articles written on the young teenagers thank you very much nancy and uh, upland tv when we talk of cross generational sex we are referring to young children having sex with it, the age mates of their fathers and young old mothers getting sugar boys to be their <laughs> men. Sugar so, boy. <laughs> so these days, this kind of occurrence is very common. You'll find that the, some of the, the ladies, especially those who have money, they grab in very young boys. They call them that I have my push cat inside my house. So she will be feeding him 
and giving all the necessary things. So because the boy cannot actually feed the young girl who is the age mate, she cannot provide the perfumes which she wants. She feels that that is an expense to him. And for him, he will just have soft life somewhere with a sugar mummy and he rushes into that. So it is also the same the other way around. All men feel that these young girls are actually even young. They are actually very attractive, nice looking, because the, the, the old mother, madame at home, is now old. They don't now have the real love. So you'll find that the old men <laughs> rush to the young girls. So this practice never used to be in our own tradition. We are now living in a society where there are many cultures coming together. In the past, you will find that you might be in a, your own village where you may not meet people like from Buganda, people from Ankole, where, but like in, if you are in municipal Kitgum, you will even find the Europeans are there with their different cultures. So our cultures are diffusing cultural assimilation, cultural, so all the types of cultures are mixed up. So nobody now respect the culture of the other. So the normal norms which used to hold our fabric is not there. So you'll find that ladies, what do they feel? The need for money has already spoiled our society. So people feel that whenever we, sex has already become commercial. So many ladies are now going in for it because they want a reward. So if you don't have, there is nothing which they give. Prostitution is the cause of the day. You have had a lot of cases where oh, students course, yes. are given money by their parents, they come to school, they end up in the sugar mommy's homes, and it, the, that fees is already adjusted. Many of these cases are already coming. You have had also ladies who are going to school, on the way she finds that she, she, she may not end up, goes in the hands of a old man who is ready to supply everything. So she drops out of the school, ends up getting married to that. This has become a normal thing of the day. As long as there is money transaction, sex has already become commercial. And it has already spoiled everything. We know the norms of the society and the fabrics of the society is actually <laughs> spoiling everything. Yet the law is very clear. A, somebody below 18 years is it? a child and it's a minor so when we have that one it's a defilement case so with with this change of today people don't respect ages people only look at the value attached to what will i gain after sex it is worse with also employment so one thing which we know girls who complete school the thing happens even from the school, you'll find that some ladies have not passed examination. But because she wants the paper, she finds all the media possible to lure the lecturer eh, and ensures that she gets the grade. Mm. So she will influence through sex and then she gets the certificate. So these practices are there and they are happening. So you'll find that when it comes even to employment, the same trend happens they will promise you promise us we shall recruit you but uh, this the examination is already sex so you will see before they they go for examination they are already prior arrangement so when she goes there she will not even answer anything because the ex interview has already been done prior so these are the, the kind of things which the society accept as normal so those which are not normal if you don't even practice that, you will not get that. So it has actually changed the impression, the value of the society. And many ladies are getting pregnant because of that. Others are even getting sickness because of that. Because their parents are poor. They cannot afford anything. They cannot go back to the parents to demand for sugar. They cannot demand for shoes. But the only option is that shortcut. And it has already spoiled our society. One thing which we should do, uh, we should also make actually children be aware that shortcuts are always dangerous. Whenever you go through shortcuts are rough, you have a length of time which you have to live. 
The old man or the old woman has done a lot in our life to earn those wealth which we see as now. For you who is young, you may at that age even have much, much wealth than her. So sacrifice your little time at this time, hour. Have faith in God that one day I will still do that. We have a lot of options. Even if you have failed, if your parents even fall, are poor, there are many alternatives that you can use to get some wealth. But not through sex. Through not illegitimate means. So <laughs> we appeal to well. <laughs> boys. <laughs> Don't be lured by sugar mummies. And that is not the end of the world. Young girls, let girl us know girl. that uh, you have a lot of things to do. Uh, I always tell them that whenever you go for sex, there are three things which you, you want. Either enjoyment, sex, and sickness. So in any case, sometimes you end with all the three. And then death is already there. Then you would not have attained your goal. So we want to thank. This is an awareness raising which we want to people to know that uh, they have to live decent life. Sure. We have to be responsible citizens. Thank you so much. Papa has talked about something which is really, it is really touching that if you go for sex, there are three things that you will experience. That is pleasure and then sex and sickness, of which I have really picked the concept of it and I believe that people outside there, the young girls, they could learn a lot from your message. Uh, I heard you talking about the issue of teenage pregnancy. In Kidkum, uh, pertaining the data that I've collected from 2020 to 2022, uh, let me say that the young girls from the age of 19 years downward who got pregnant, they are 2,046 with a percent of 21%. You see that? So, as the CEO and a consultant, with WAPU who works, as, who works in the organizational body, what could be the initiative or the, the criteria to cap this problem? Yeah, thank you so much. It is true that uh, teenage pregnancy is alarming. For us, we have also carried out that fact finding. We found that uh, Kitgum people prefer this dancing. There are markets, auctions, which it takes three days and during those auctions, you find that many ladies rush there. And after auctions, there are dances which take quite long. We have also traditional, uh, uh, when there is a dead marriage, the marriage takes three days. And it will not end as marriage. So at night, it is a different thing. That is where there is a lot of men's girls find their boys there. So when death is already as occurred, funeral rites are there. So you will find that girls, all the girls, even the young children, they all go to where there is marriage. Whether they are not even involved, they are there. So those are places where sex is practiced at the highest level. We have already actually made uh, consultation, made a lot of sensitization with it, the locals. One thing which we did is an awareness raising to the youth. We have formed actually youth vigilance. Like for us, we have there are caregivers who always have to monitor. During our auction days, we sensitize. Uh, like uh, these days, uh, they say when a uh, funeral has already done, you have to close all these radios, take them there. This is not a place for dances. Uh, take the radios back. If you want your dances, go back. So all funerals that are already taking place these days, after that, they close uh, the radios, then they take them back. And we don't want any other function to continue about life apart from that. Apart from that, there are schools where they, the girls actually make drama, shows, plays during the days when the parents come for the parents' meeting. They tell the dangers of teenage pregnancies. They also give life examples uh, of certain ladies, like the concerts, of certain ladies who actually got pregnant. The man refused <coughs> him because of the trauma. She died. Now, with that one, this is a very bad experience. And when the parents also see the pity, they have said many of their children, especially who come from long distance, come in Kitgum because now they don't uh, provide enough 
uh, money to them, they end up in men's places. When they are pregnant, they are rejected. So they appeal to them not to do that. So we have been advocating and even following up for those who are already there. Some agencies have already taken them for tailoring for others programs so that at least they find alternative source of living uh, that they have to. But generally, there are weekly uh, programs by the senior woman teacher in schools. Like ADRA is doing a very good thing together with us. ADRA is coming, we visit these ladies, we, for them they, drive, they provide sanitary pads, we also sensitize them. Uh, ladies who have already experienced MP, they go on sex education. We also encourage the mothers because for us, sex used to be a taboo. The parents don't tell a child she has to experience from who, <laughs> from the friends, that this is your already age. This is how we got courtship with our friends. <laughs> Not this time you have to make a lady aware of herself. At this age, you need to know. They have to know also menstruation. They have to know also family planning. All these methods that can make her be retained in school. And in some cases, most of these boarding schools, we encourage the parents to go to the boarding schools. Because now within the schools, the environment is very conducive for learning and does not actually encourage much of actually roaming. And like a child who comes from home, you'll find that she goes to face water overstays there, she goes to, the, uh, to buy things in the shop. You don't know what is happening. But when a child is in the school with the fellows, there is nothing. There is a lot of restriction and good conducive environment that actually limits us uh, from all those risky factors. So these are the kind of uh, programs that we always carry uh, to ensure that the girls are retained in schools and complete their mandatory education until they marry. We say marriage is a normal thing. Time is coming for anybody to have a family. But at that so, age, you have first to be actually conscious about your age until you complete education. Don't hurry. Marriage never ends. We always tell like me, I tell you ladies, if you are 20, don't have sex. You will be even if you may die at 70, which means from 20 to 50, you will have over 50 years for sex. Why do you hurry at this which can spoil your future? <laughs> so the girl learned, when they have realized that uh, this, I have to sacrifice this period, and I would have completed my school, I would be getting my money, then I would be free in my family. That is the kind of education we give to them, and they find that, uh, yes, I am up to make uh, alternatives. You have to make a choice in life. So when you don't have a choice, that is a problem which you have. So always we have to make the choice, plan for your future so that you be a responsible housewife. Because when you get pregnant, you cannot even care the child, you cannot feed the child, and if the man abandons you, you think of that. We also give practical examples of some of the ladies who have ma got married, then were abandoned, and they are suffering. When they see those practical, they will refrain, because it will be as uh, a trauma to them, it will be a block to them. Thank you. Possibly you have said it all, you have said a lot, pertaining the teenagers and uh, teenage pregnancies, the challenges they surface, and things that can be done to cap it. Uh, going back to Dr. Kilama Dennis, who is also the Youth Councillor 5 of Amuro District, uh, I would like to ask, because we have the chronological flow of problems among the youth. We have right from the teenage uh, stage, we have problems there. Coming to the youthful stage, we have problems there. And then as the youth leader, how best or what initiative can we take to empower the youth outside there? I, I think uh, we have uh, been looking at uh, the gender equality promotion mm -hmm. at workplaces. And you brought us far talking about uh, teenage pregnancy, sexuality, cross-generational, sexual affairs and so forth. Now you're talking of how can we help the young people out there. I would not want to speak much because uh, the whole topic of actually talking about uh, whatever Papa was talking about, it needed different forum. 
but just briefly as young people out there I always ask people starting with issue of gender and sexuality there are things that uh, in our culture used to be silent love was silent you just see someone you like you go with them but because of Telemundo and many other things uh, the ladies who went to school and the guys who went to school they have learned certain love language that never used to exist in our society so to the young people there who are preparing to get married or who want to ensure that there there is that equality first understand the person you're going for number one never rush because of last like someone look good like you I, I shouldn't rush to you just because of that I would love to take an example when I was growing my first girlfriend was when I was in senior four I was stubborn I had a girlfriend she was in senior two it, it was just like getting to know how things go around every time I see this girl I get disorganized and uh, when that stage pass when I finished senior four my mind changed I started to holding myself so high that any girl who has not finished senior four I don't want even if she look as beautiful as what I will tell my friend like what conversation will we have with her so when I enter advanced level I will only accept to if a lady is beautiful and I find she's in senior four, at least I can go and talk to. That is knowing your worth and knowing the level you want to go to, not collecting anything. So when I left senior four, I went to Mulago Paramedical School. If a lady is not in A level, I don't go for, because I know that will not be the test of a woman I want, even if she's that beautiful. And I will always challenge my fellow friends, like, if a young girl even if she look beautiful like what if she's not at certain level don't go for her i remember one day i i chased one of my friend in one of the festive season we were hanging out somewhere he came with some teenager like man you cannot sit here with us you better change the kind of person who is a companion to you or you don't stay with us you come with us when you when you're done with them because if anything happened they'll see all of us so as young people as youth if you out there you carry yourself that uh, high be your brother's keeper be your sister keeper make them understand that beyond where they are there's something better okay two as a young people the world has become so competitive try to understand what love language you want if you think you want to marry some people love to hear you beautiful you're smart if the partner you're going for that do not have the do not value the love language that you understand maybe you have to forego to prevent this issue of pick and play every now and then it has gone worse that the pick and play is resulting in children who are left to be looked after by parents as young people out there the other thing is see a girl child or a boy child is equal they are all human being and the future the future is clear is seeing that nobody is going to remain behind and gone are the days where men things everything start and end with them the future the line has been drawn that if you young boys especially play the people we are talking about as the gender promoter who are always lean to the women they have brought the women very high up so you're going to be dishwasher you're going to be compound mower and your wife will always decide if she want to sleep home or not because you have never brought yourself up and that's what we have been doing to them we men always think because we provide we must decide when to go home and what to do at home so the trajectory changing so work hard and know that we are now all equal and when you see a woman don't see her with what she's covering down there see her as a human being another thing for the young people out there is work hard there's no shortcut to life as papa said earlier 
I was having a conversation with someone yesterday. Said the corruption which has eaten Uganda is actually about the young people trying to think the shortcut to life. They admire people driving Range Rovers when they have just finished university yesterday. The same statement was repeated by Honorable Ilarunek in his statement. He said the, the problem Uganda have is the young excited people who have joined government. They want to get everything that they, the category of Honorable Onek, has worked for for the last 40 years. The young people who are appointed in government want to get in one year. It's the same. We young people, we want to get life that he has been, he has experienced the last 40 years. If he's enjoying, we want to enjoy them today. Start to think there's no shortcut. You may have, if you're 20 years, you have another 50 years to live or 60 years to live. I would love to end here by saying, they're saying there can always not be equality, total equality, because genetically we are created different. Like Syria, if someone say you are equal to me, is a lie. <laughs> but let's provide a platform whereby we are all considered as human beings. We are all given same opportunity, same platform. When you're a boy child or you're a man out there, you have things that make you feel things are not right never take rob never take poison go and report to the rightful authorities even in families there are always protocol you report to your closest brother or cousin you try to solve things and i've always said this the, the elderly people say you are bad mothers i said marriage is not a prison relationship is not a prison what kill your body they said, some people do, who are too religious, they said, if it kill my body and spare my soul, it's okay. But I'm telling you, we don't know the life of tomorrow. We know the life which is now. What kill your body, avoid it. If the relationship consume you and makes you look like you are not respecting your partner, makes you feel like, I've always told this, if someone always keep complaining and I feel I'm doing best, maybe my love language is not there. I, theirs, and I need to sit down and discuss with them how best can we do it. Thank you so much, viewer. Till we meet again. Thank you so much, Dr. Kilama Dennis, uh, who is also the Councillor 5, the Youth Councillor 5 of Amur District. Going to the last guest speaker, that is uh, Ms. Alain Joan, who is a community activist and a psychologist. Uh, I would like to to, to, to understand something briefly about the aspects of sexuality of which you've talked about. Uh, Dr. Kilama uh, highlighted more on the aspects of how youth should be empowered. And then someone who has just finished the university may have the qualifications, the, the competence the person may have to attain a certain position. And what is your stand on the women? Uh, women's position to take up the leadership in institutions and organizations. What is your, your stand? To what extent do you think that women can do their best or do you think that men can possibly dominate everything asked before? Thank you so much Nancy. Uh, definitely I don't think men can dominate everything. Reason being as CSOs, there is a campaign for equality. The government has also done a lot by giving uh, the five points. Is this called affirmative action? Mm, affirmative for the action. women, yes, for the girls or the girl child. That means we have space to compete equally with the men. So if he's a doctor and I'm a doctor, we've actually gone through the same training. Yeah? Maybe the only difference is our level of intelligence, the inborn intelligence, which makes us different. So it clearly means that if he can be employed as a doctor, I can definitely be employed as a doctor. 
looking at the qualification I have attained, looking at how well I have passed, and my competition level during the interviews. Personal merit. Yes. So it clearly tells us that a woman can hold any position. Professionally, a woman can hold any position, be it a manager, be it an askari, we've seen them. We've seen women who are in the security units and they're doing their work so well. We've seen managers. But the question comes back to me or to us as women. Are we ready? Are we ready to compete? Are we moving around carrying vulnerability in our heads saying we are vulnerable? <laughs> because that is one thing that is dragging us down. We are fighting for equality, we are campaigning for equality, but we still feel deep down in our hearts and in our heads we still have that voice that is so alive that keeps telling us, you know, you're vulnerable, you can't do this. You're vulnerable, you can't do this. What could be the reason possibly because we have the rampant cases in the workplaces whereby women are sexually harassed mm. to maybe to attain a certain position, maybe not even to attain a position, but just in workplaces women are sexually harassed. What could be your, your view on that? I love that. Earlier on I said I'll be a bit controversial. Yeah? Because <laughs> for the fact that I'm a woman, I don't have to join in the cry without looking at another angle. I'm seriously open-minded and I think with my own head, I don't just join the bandwagon. So definitely uh, you've just brought it out that women are sexually harassed. I think this statement can only work for individual cases when someone comes up and says I was sexually harassed. Yeah? But when we look at uh, sexual relationships within workplaces, not all of them are harassment. Some are mutual. Just like we always say in the community, it is not written anywhere that you're going to meet your life partner here. We meet in toilets, we meet in dance halls, we meet in funerals, we meet at <laughs> other people's marriages. We meet in the bus and start a relationship. I could have this time oh, met this guy the, at or office. Or in the hospital. Yes, in the hospital. <laughs> I could have this time met this guy in office. And then we started a new, um, a mutual relationship. So a number of times I've seen women who have played victims we get into mutual relationship because there is a difference between playing victim and actual harassment. We get into a mutual relationship and then things don't go well. I've been quiet all these years. Maybe we have dated for three years and I was, everything was okay. We are in the same workplace, no complaints, yeah? We're all happy because when relationship is starting, it's always very sweet. But when responsibilities are beginning to seem so real, things start taking their own different directions. Now this particular year, it's, it's beginning to start its own different direction because responsibilities are becoming real. Then I jump up and say I'm sexually harassed. Seriously? For two, three years, I'm quiet, I'm okay, and then this particular year, this month, I am sexually harassed, and then the man is supposed to be, you know, taken as a serial perpetrator of sexual harassment. So at times we really have to go very slow about these situations because relationship, relationship issues are very tricky. We should take time and be patient before we pass out judgment. Not everything should be judged by the face value. It is not what, it is not, okay, like things really don't really look or things are not real unless we try to find out. So take time. If it's a it is not what we it think is it is. It is not what we think it is unless we find out <laughs> exactly. what it is. Thank you, doctor. Yeah, so we really have to be a bit patient and try to understand, listen from both sides. Yeah, I might play victim now, but when you bring him in the, on the same table, I'll fail to say what I told you in secret. Why? Because I was lying to you. Because I knew you're pro women equality or you have pro gender equality and then you're like you know it is the men they are the perpetrators and now i come to you because i know you're going to say definitely he's the perpetrator so i come to you i ride on that soft spot because i know it already exists 
hmm. and then you cast all your stones against him. And at a later time, reality always comes out. Because reality is like pregnancy. I might hide it, I'm not pregnant, I'm not pregnant, one, two, three, four months, but the seventh month it's out. I can't hide it anymore. So reality always comes out. And then you realize later that, okay, probably I actually cast this man for nothing. It was her problem. Oh, there was literally nothing. She was just looking for sympathy. So we have to really go so slow, even at workplaces. Not every relationship, I believe, is harassment. Some of them are really mutual, and we should go slow on those relationships. Where there is harassment, definitely, I don't expect someone to keep quiet for years. Because there is a level at which each of us can take pain or discomfort. There is a breaking point. There is what we call a breaking point. When you take in too much, we've seen this in communities, when a man is constantly beating his wife, the common ones we see, he's constantly been beating his wife, it reaches a point where she says enough is enough. She's going to take a step. It might be a positive step or a negative step, but at the end of the day, she has broken the silence. So definitely this break will always come through. We just have to go slow about this. But as you asked earlier on, for the girls who have just come out of campus, we all had these dreams. Yeah? What the university and we had this ideal life that we have. Yeah? <laughs> that is supposed to be how my life is supposed to be. Personally I imagined I would get out of you know, out of university, have a big office as big as this, and then have my own room you know, have a secretary that whoever comes to see me will go through her or him. <laughs> and then I'll be like, no, I don't feel like, okay, book them up for tomorrow. You know, I'll see them next week. Let them come back. But the reality strikes. <laughs> it comes out. You know, you come out here and then there is literally no office for you. You have to hustle. On street. Apparently, yes, I might be having my degree or apparently having certain level of qualification. But where do I work? Under a tree. I sit under a tree. And that is reality. So if you're out there, you're about to get out of campus, or you've just gotten out of campus, it is not as soft as it is in our heads. Reality comes out, <laughs> and when you're out here, be ready to face it. If you're not able to face it, it's where we're going to start offering our bodies. Because some girls actually offer their bodies, by the way, to the men. And when they're found, the men are blamed. I go to a man because I want a job and tell you, you know what, you, I can offer you whatever you need, yeah? And then the guy looks at it, maybe he has also been sexually starved for some time, and he says, okay, this is a soft spot for me. I'll give you the job in two weeks' time, I have sex with you now, and tomorrow is even not a decision-making level. He has already had sex with you. And then you thought your body was enough to open doors. And any job that we get, I always tell my friends, any job that you get because you've offered your body to someone, your job will last as long as your body is still sweet for that person. But the moment you stop being sweet, there is another sweet person somewhere else. Consider yourself unemployed. Because the gate pass to the job has been abandoned. There this is a replacement. Your, your, your last words to the females that say My that last words to <laughs> <So, laughs> the ladies out there. Life is not simple. But let's be strategic. Let's be realistic. Let's be real. Do what you can do within yourself. And always seek help where you cannot support yourself. And the struggle for equality we can't do it all alone. We need everyone else on board. Including us. We need the women, we <laughs> need the men, we need the children. If we start this with the children who are still very young right now, it becomes a language that the community speaks. It becomes a normal thing. And then we don't have to struggle anymore. It's unfortunate that this struggle actually came when we are this old. And now we are talking about equality. So it's it's like a new thing that you're, you're you still, know, you're teaching. Still young. Teaching. 22 years. <laughs> Doctor, stop. <laughs> <laughs> like you're teaching a cow to dance <laughs> at this age. So it's really difficult. But when we start it, maybe we start up programs in schools. We talk about these things. We make discussions on female issues open. We make discussions on male issues open. We have teachers who are male who freely talk about sex education.
we don't break it out women go talk the other side men go talk the other side because we have fathers who have young girls who are about to start their menstrual period how is this girl going to be confident enough to walk to her father and say daddy i'm in need of parts if they cannot talk about things that affect women so we need everyone on board to achieve equality so right, okay. thank you so much it has been a wonderful engagement and interactive conversations that I've had with uh, the kids. I have been Lakot Nancy, the host and the moderator working with Upland TV. Thank you so much. Be blessed. We shall meet for the next program. Thank you.